you'll uh, be seeing both views, both from space station external cameras and the Soyuz, as uh, the Soyuz spacecraft and its three occupants uh, back away from the orbital complex. Sergey Ryzhikov, the Soyuz commander, under the call sign of Favore, is in the center seat of the descent module, flanked on his left by Kud Sverchkov and on his right by Kate Rubens. Switching to narrow angle. One minute away from the command to initiate the opening of the hooks, holding the Soyuz in place at the Poisk module. Uh, sending command D7, D15. Uh, arm a command uh, D17 to open the hooks. Copy. Going to page 42 and arming command to open the hooks. The International Space Station currently flying over Mongolia, about to cross the border into China. To fire the command to open the hooks. At the specified time, you are going to open the hooks. Copy. Standing by for the command to begin the opening of the hooks. Three, two, one, command sent. And the hooks are driving open. Is no longer illuminated. Electrical connections uh, not illuminated. Uh, the um, uh, transfer hatch closed. LED is on. Copy. One minute away from physical separation. Just a quick reminder for you that um, at physical separation, the timers will start automatically. Copy. Moments away from the springs on both sides of the docking interface to push off against one another to begin physical separation. Copy. During the separation, please make sure there are no fod uh, around the perimeter of the docking interface. I copy. I will provide you a running commentary on that. Thank you. Yes. Undocking confirmed. Separation. On time at 8.34 p.m. Central Time, 9.34 p.m. Eastern Time, as the International Space Station flew 258 statute miles over the Mongolian Chinese border. Moving away in our small vehicle. Rubens, Rizhikov, and Kud Sverchkov on their way home for a landing less than three and a half hours from now. Uh, the range is about 10 meters. <laughs> and we have aggregate uh, readiness of um, docking system. Four zero, oh, four, uh, zero three is the exact time of undocking. We're not seeing any FOD around the perimeter of the docking interface. Copy. Expedition 65 now officially underway aboard the International Space Station as uh, the three crew members on the Soyuz MS-17 begin their trek home. I 
can view the entire uh, docking interface, and I can confirm the docking interface uh, is uh, clear of all f of FOD. The range uh, between the station and the service vehicle is about 10 meters, and we still have aggregate uh, readiness of the attitude control system. And this view from Soyuz cameras. Stand by for the first separation burn. Showing uh, the uh, Soyuz's perspective, looking right back at the docking port on the Poisk module. Just seconds away from the first of uh, two separation burns by the uh, Soyuz uh, vehicle. This will be an eight second burn to increase its opening rate away from the orbital laboratory. Depots uh, uh, started firing exactly three minutes after the un undocking. 7.9 seconds of uh, depot uh, firing. Right now, we are rolling to the left. Um, the um, roll maneuver is complete. The range is currently about 30 meters. Standing by for the second sub burn. Good thruster uh, activity. First separation burn was right on the money. Standing by for the second. We see the uh, motion control system readiness. Yep, we confirm aggregate uh, edited control system readiness. Um, in five seconds, stand by for the second set burn. Copy. Depots are on at four minutes, 20 uh, seconds after the physical separation. Um, we are moving towards um, the U.S. segment of the station. 14 decimal nine seconds. And the second separation burn now complete and reported to be good. No issues. This view again from the Soyuz as it uh, begins a faster opening rate away from the space station. 18. Um, to, um, Soyuz departure uh, this evening coming amidst a period of activity in which 14 astronauts and cosmonauts are coming and going from the station in four different spacecraft over a three-week period in addition to two vehicle relocations, one by this very Soyuz MS-17 spacecraft back on March 19th, followed a few days later by the um, relocation of the Crew-1 Dragon vehicle. Uh, the periscope to um, approach mode. And you can uh, remove uh, the maneuver flag. Copy. Uv1 to um, address 11. Copy and confirm. Go ahead. We have maneuver. It's gone. Uh, depots are position closed. Are on, and we're monitoring via. Yes. Yeah, so uh, uh, if you have a go to put the cover day into the closed position. Copy. I have a go. Uh, on your go, uh, we'd like to remove the uh, uh, inhibit for 
command execution uh, uh, confer confirmation. You are going to do that. Use address two. Enter the number. Entering. <laughs> Inhibit of um, <laughs> confirmation <laughs> or acknowledgement of multiple vehicles in the field of view. The uh, Crew 1 Crew Dragon Resilience in the foreground. Right behind it, uh, the Soyuz MS-17 departing, heading for a landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan at 11.56 p.m. Central. Um, confirmed. Selecting. Uh, go ahead and turn off um, SSVPM. Uh, docking mechanism. Copy. That's command uh, D8. D8 has been uh, fired. D7, D17 are not illuminated. Turning off the flight light. The flight light is turned off. And we're going to put uh, the translation hand controller into the stowage or transportation position. Copy and concur. Sergey. Uh, the juxtaposition of uh, the current space program and the future target, the crescent moon, Copy. nearby uh, as the Soyuz continues to depart the neighborhood of the International Space Station. Translational hand controller is in the transportation position. Copy. TVS uh, display. I have armed the command to TV off, OFF. Ready to fire the command. Command has been fired and executed. TV is off. Copy. Please let us know uh, when you'd like to get the SCADU parameters. You can uh, give it to us now. The first section uh, pressure tank pressure is 162. Copy. Sec section 2 pressure tank um, Pressure is 164, and prop is 460. Copy. Soyuz Commander Sergei Rizhikov uh, reporting fuel parameters and uh, tank pressures to uh, the Russian flight controllers uh, in the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow. Uh, the reduced pressure alarm disconnection from control circuit. Command A5. Uh, Good view of the Soyuz MS-17 uh, with Rubens Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov uh, on board. Um, 11 minutes now uh, since the undocking of the Soyuz. Next stop, Kazakhstan. Off. And the off nominal... Uh, Uh, off nominal situations, our ODF is um, restaged. Copy that. The next uh, milestone is um, at 055500. Okay, so that means we'll see you in over an hour. Yes, OLED. just make sure On that you know, downlink. you remember that um, um, so you are in dynamic enabled mode 
on the vehicle, so uh, be sensitive to that. And as well, the uh, three crew members aboard the uh, Soyuz MS-17 have yeah. departed the International Space Station. The uh, search and recovery forces and embedded NASA personnel have departed their hotel in Jezkazgan, the staging site for tonight's landing operations. They'll be making their way to the Jezkazgan airport to position themselves on their respective Russian Mi-8 helicopters, awaiting takeoff around the time of the deorbit burn, headed for the landing zone. This is Mission Control Houston. If you're just joining us, you're looking at the Soyuz MS-17 spacecraft that departed uh, the International Space Station 14 minutes ago under the command of Russian cosmonaut Sergei Ryzhikov, accompanied by NASA's Kate Rubens and Russian cosmonaut Sergei Kudsverchkov. They are now free-flying from the station, moving to a point uh, well away from the complex for the deorbit burn that will take place to begin their journey home, the deorbit burn scheduled at 11.01 p.m. Central Time tonight. The uh, three crew members on board the Soyuz MS-17 will now have a bit of uh, free time until uh, a little over an hour from now when they'll tag up with uh, the Russian flight controllers uh, at the Russian Mission Control Center to uh, receive a briefing on uh, weather conditions in the landing area, the atmospheric pressure inputs uh, for their control panel, and other uh, checks of their systems prior to the time that they approach uh, the deorbit burn. It should be a splendid Saturday morning for a landing uh, in Kazakhstan with, again, just a few clouds forecast at 25,000 feet 
visibility in excess of six miles and temperatures uh, to greet the three crew members of about 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Better, or do you want me to put them into the generic one? That's awesome. Better a folder, yes. It will be called MS-17. MS-17, MS fantastic. Thank you. Now that uh, the undocking has occurred, uh, let's look forward uh, to the deorbit burn that is planned for 11.01 p.m. Central Time, a 4 minute 38 second retrograde braking maneuver to slow the Soyuz down, enabling it to drop out of orbit. Some 28 and a half minutes later, the pyrotechnic separation of the three sections of the Soyuz, the crew in the center section called the descent module. With the heat shield in the direction of travel, the uh, Three crew members will have G-forces building up around them to about three or four Gs or so, their maximum G-loads. About 15 minutes before touchdown, the command sequence is initiated to first deploy a large drogue chute, followed by an even larger main parachute. The Soyuz will cant into the right orientation, and uh, just a few seconds before touchdown, soft landing engines at the base of the Soyuz will fire in a final braking maneuver and uh, the crew will be home on the steppe of Kazakhstan with landing scheduled at 11.56 p.m. Central Time, 10.56 a.m. Kazakhstan Time on Saturday morning. Once uh, the landing occurs, the uh, search and recovery forces will be uh, touching down one by one in the MI-8 helicopters that they will be boarding soon at the airport in Jezkazgan for about a 35-minute flight uh, from Jezkazgan to the landing zone. Once uh, the helos are on the ground, uh, first off will be the uh, erection of an inflatable medical tent nearby where the three crew members will be carried into for initial medical tests shortly after they have a few minutes uh, in uh, comfortable chairs outside of the uh, spacecraft once they're extracted one by one. The uh, medical tests uh, should take uh, about an hour and a half or so, after which uh, the three crew members will, will be brought uh, into respective helicopters uh, nearby for about a two hour and 15 minute flight to the uh, staging city in Karaganda, uh, where all of the uh, various uh, uh, respective parties uh, supporting landing tonight in Kazakhstan uh, first began uh, their uh, meetings and uh, reviews of landing conditions a few days ago. It uh, Once back in Karaganda, Kate Rubens uh, will board a uh, NASA aircraft for a flight back to Houston while Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov will board a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft for a flight back to their training base in Star City, Russia, outside of Moscow.
To recap, uh, the Soyuz MS-17 has undocked from the International Space Station, that occurring on time at 8.34 p.m. Central Time. Kate Rubens, Sergei Ryzhikov, and Sergei Kudsverchkov are now moving to a safe distance away from the station for the uh, final leg of their journey home and a parachute-assisted landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan just before midnight Central Time tonight. We will be back on the air in about an hour and a half at 10.30 p.m. Central Time, 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time with our deorbit burn and landing coverage. And again, you see the times there of the deorbit burn, 11.01 p.m., landing at 11.56 p.m. We will be on the air with all of the post-landing activities at the landing site. So we'll see you back here at Mission Control in Houston in an hour and a half. Thanks for joining us. This is Mission Control Houston.
Good evening from Mission Control in Houston and the International Space Station Flight Control Center at the Johnson Space Center. You are looking live at the Soyuz MS-17 spacecraft attached for the next few minutes to the Poisk module docking port on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. On board uh, that Soyuz vehicle at this hour, clad in the Russian Sokol and entry suits, are the three crew members of Expedition 54 who are just hours away from completing a 185-day mission with a parachute-assisted landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan. Strapped into their respective seats in the center section of the Soyuz in the descent module, NASA astronaut Kate Rubens, Sergei Rizhikov, Soyuz MS-17 commander, and Sergei Kudsverchkov, the International Space Station currently flying 270 miles uh, over the Indian Ocean, moving from southwest to northeast in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. We are 18 minutes away from the actual physical separation of the Soyuz from the Poisk module. The undocking command will initiate the opening of the hooks holding the Soyuz to the Poisk. That will begin just under 16 minutes from now. It'll take about 90 seconds or so for those hooks to open. Springs on both sides of the docking interface will push off against one another to induce physical separation at a rate of one point, uh, at a rate of 0.12 meters per second. That will be followed by a pair of separation burns from the Soyuz thrusters, the first one coming three minutes after physical separation, an eight-second firing of the thrusters, followed a minute and 20 seconds after that by a second separation burn of 15 seconds in duration to create an opening rate that will enable the Soyuz to drift away from the space station over the uh, course of the next couple of hours and put it in position for the deorbit burn that will enable uh, the Soyuz to drop out of orbit for its high-speed entry back to Earth and a landing that is scheduled at 11.56 p.m. Central Time, 10.56 a.m. Kazakhstan Time on Saturday morning. The uh, three crew members have uh, completed uh, leak checks on their Sokol launch and entry suits. They uh, closed uh, all of the hatches within the Soyuz spacecraft to the three uh, sections. The uppermost section of the Soyuz, that is the orbital module that is docked to Poisk, and the uh, back end module, the white section you see with the solar arrays, called the uh, instrumentation and propulsion module, where the engines are. All of the hatches are closed, everything is in uh, good shape, everything is leak tight, and uh, the crew is ready to begin the initiation of uh, the commanding that will enable them to depart the International Space Station. This crew will have spent 185 days in space and aboard the station, a mission uh, that will complete uh, itself in a couple of hours or so of 78.4 million statute miles, a mission encompassing 2,960 orbits of the Earth. Upon landing, Kate Rubens will have accrued 300 days in space on her two missions. Sergei Rizhikov will have completed 358 days in space on his two flights. Sergei Kudsverchkov is wrapping up his first mission into space of 185 days. About three hours ago, uh, the departing crew members, Rubens Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov, uh, bid a final farewell to uh, the crew members on board the International Space Station who uh, remain behind under the current command of uh, NASA astronaut Shannon Walker. This is a, a quick replay of uh, the crew members saying farewell to one another in the uh, Poisk module making their way through the hatchway into the Soyuz uh, MS-17 spacecraft and then closing the hatch to the Soyuz to begin uh, final landing preparations. Those preparations included uh, checks of their Sokol launch and entry suits as well as communications checks and other uh, systems checks. And there's the hatch swinging closed on the Soyuz side of the docking interface. That occurred at 5.24 p.m. Central Time, 6.24 p.m. Eastern Time. 
Here in Mission Control in Houston, uh, the Orbit 3 team of flight controllers on console at this hour, led by Flight Director Marcos Flores, joined on console by astronaut Zena Cardman, the spacecraft communicator. A uh, short time ago, they pulled uh, the flight controllers here in Houston uh, and received a go for undocking. Uh, Flores passed that on to his uh, Russian flight director counterpart at the Russian Mission Control Center in Karyov, outside of Moscow. And so the stage is set for uh, the undocking of the Soyuz MS-17 and the return of these three crew members back to Earth. Moscow Station and Space Command One. The recording is on. Thank you very much. The uh, trip back home uh, for Rubens, Rizhikov, and Kudsvertkov uh, begins uh, just a few minutes from now with the undocking of the Soyuz uh, from the International Space Station, as you see in this animation. Over the course of the next couple of hours, the Soyuz moves to a safe distance away from the station for the deorbit burn. That is a retrograde braking maneuver, a firing of the Soyuz engines for four minutes, 38 seconds, to slow the Soyuz down by 128 meters per second, enabling it to drop out of orbit. About 31 minutes after undocking, pyrotechnic separation of the three sections occurs. That leaves the crew members alone in the descent module, the heat shield in the direction of travel to repel temperatures that will build to about 2,500 degrees around the spacecraft. Some 15 minutes before touchdown, the command will be issued to open the chutes at an altitude of about uh, 10.7 kilometers above the Earth. At that point, uh, first a drogue chute deploys, then a larger main chute deploys, and uh, an altimeter at the base of the Soyuz uh, feeds uh, computer information uh, that measures uh, the altitude and the rate of descent prior to a soft landing engine firing just a few feet above the ground, and the Soyuz will be home. Landing is scheduled at 11.56 p.m. Central Time, 12.56 a.m. Eastern Time, 10.56 a.m. in Kazakhstan. The landing targeted for a uh, open field about 91 miles to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan. As you look at the MS-17 still attached to the Poisk as we prepare for undocking, the uh, Russian Search and Recovery Forces under the uh, control of the uh, civilian agency Rosaviatsa, along with NASA embedded personnel, are currently uh, in the process of leaving their hotel in Jezkazgan, where they spent the night uh, after flying from the staging city of Karaganda, Kazakhstan, on an Antonov uh, military transport plane. They uh, forward positioned themselves in Jezkazgan, where a dozen Russian Mi-8 helicopters uh, were flown, some of them uh, having been positioned downrange uh, to a ballistic landing site closer to the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. In the unlikely event, a technical problem would create a shortfall in the Soyuz descent trajectory. However, uh, if everything goes as planned, the landing uh, will occur at 11.56 p.m. Central Time. The uh, Russian uh, helicopters with NASA and Russian personnel on board will be deployed from Jezkazgan around the time of the deorbit burn uh, to uh, fly about 35 minutes or so to the landing zone where they will fly in a circular racetrack pattern around the zone to uh, await the arrival of the Soyuz under its main chute. Once the Soyuz touches down, the helicopters will land one by one in sequential fashion. Uh, the first helicopter uh, bearing uh, key uh, personnel from RSC Energia uh, that will uh, erect an inflatable medical tent nearby and begin the process of extracting the crew uh, through uh, the uh, hatch. Depending on which hatch, uh, that will uh, be determined by whether the Soyuz lands upright or is pulled on its side, as it sometimes is uh, wont to do, based on winds at the landing site. The weather uh, down at the landing site uh, southeast of Jezkazgan uh, is expected to be ideal. Just a few clouds at 25,000 feet are forecast, visibility in six uh, plus miles, temperatures around 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, it should be a beautiful Saturday spring morning for the return of Rubens, 
Rizhikov and could Sverchkov. We sent the command. And we transitioned to display. Just eight and a half minutes away now from uh, the time uh, of physical separation. About an hour and a half ago, the hooks on the Poisk module side of the docking interface were opened. And again, the undocking command uh, that will open up the Soyuz hooks is expected about six and a half minutes from now. Mode inhibit command. And we have five, four, three, two, one. The command is sent. We confirm a dynamic mode inhibit has been removed. E2 India 2. Command went through. Bdus is um, confirmed. Repress of the KDU is confirmed, and we're turning on the accelerometer. And you are receiving. At the time of physical separation here, just a few minutes from now, Expedition 64 will formally come to an end, and Expedition 65 will begin under the command of uh, NASA astronaut Shannon Walker on your left. She is uh, joined in this picture on and on board the station by her SpaceX uh, Dragon Crew-1 crewmates, Victor Glover, Mike Hopkins, and Soichi Noguchi. Joining them to form a seven-person crew are the three crew members who were launched uh, and arrived at the station just one week ago. Mark Vandehei, NASA flight engineer, Oleg Novitsky, and Pyotr Dubrov. That uh, seven-person crew will expand to an 11-person crew next Thursday when the Crew-2 crew that arrived at the Kennedy Space Center earlier today blasts off in the SpaceX Crew Dragon Endeavor from Launch Pad 39A at the Cape. They are led by uh, Mission Commander uh, Shane Kimbrough on the right, uh, joined by Megan MacArthur, Thomas Pesquet of the European Space Agency, and Aki Hoshide of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, who will become uh, Space Station Commander, taking over from Shannon Walker on April 27th, on the eve of the Crew-1's departure from the orbital complex. Um, wide angle. We're using the wide angle lens. No, stay on the narrow one. Copy. And we will use the HSC mode one. Copy. From the now just uh, six minutes away from undocking, everything in good shape. Russian flight controllers uh, in this live balcony camera view of the uh, Russian Mission Control Center Space Station Flight Control Room in Koryov outside of Moscow. Backup SSVP is no longer illuminated. Moscow favor, one minute before undock, we are ready and at 4.31.30, we are ready to send the command. Uh, that is right. Prepare D Delta 7 command. Copy. Again, a great view from Space external cameras of the Soyuz MS-17, Rubens, Rizhikov, Kud, Sverchkov, all set uh, to depart the International Space Station that has been their home for the past six months and begin the trip back to Earth and a parachute-assisted landing step of Kazakhstan. We are receiving the video. Bobby, you are receiving the video. So we're getting the image from the vehicle, and uh, we're getting the image of the other camera, and the images are the same. Yes, I could see that they switched over just now.
And this view uh, coming from uh, a camera on the Soyuz MS-17 looking at the docking target on the Poisk module. You'll uh, be seeing both views, both from space station external cameras and the Soyuz as uh, the Soyuz spacecraft and its three occupants uh, back away from the orbital complex. Sergey Ryzhikov, the Soyuz commander, under the call sign of Favore, is in the center seat of the descent module, flanked on his left by Kud Sverchkov and on his right by Kate Rubens. Switching to narrow angle. One minute away from the command to initiate the opening of the hooks, holding the Soyuz in place at the Poisk module. Uh, sending command D7, D15. Uh, arm a command uh, D17 to open the hooks. Copy. Going to page 42 and arming command to open the hooks. The International Space Station currently flying over Mongolia, about to cross the border into China. To fire the command to open the hooks. At the specified time, you are go to open the hooks. Copy. Standing by for the command to begin the opening of the hooks. Three, two, one, command sent. And the hooks are driving open. Is no longer illuminated. Electrical connections uh, not illuminated. Uh, the um, uh, transfer hatch closed. LED is on. Copy. One minute away from physical separation. Just a quick reminder for you that um, at physical separation, the timers will start automatically. Copy. Moments away from the springs on both sides of the docking interface to push off against one another to begin physical separation. Copy. During the separation, please make sure there are no fod uh, around the perimeter of the docking interface. I copy. I will provide you a running commentary on that. Thank you. Yes. Undocking confirmed. Separation. On time at 8.34 p.m. Central Time, 9.34 p.m. Eastern Time, as the International Space Station flew 258 statute miles over the Mongolian Chinese border. Moving away in our small vehicle. Rubens, Rizhikov, and Kud Sverchkov on their way home for a landing less than three and a half hours from now. Uh, the range is about 10 meters. <laughs> and we have aggregate uh, readiness of um, docking system. Four zero, oh, four, uh, zero three is the exact time of undocking. We're not seeing any FOD around the perimeter of the docking interface. Copy.
Expedition 65 now officially underway aboard the International Space Station as uh, the three crew members on the Soyuz MS-17 begin their trek home. Uh, can uh, view the entire uh, docking interface and I can confirm the docking interface uh, is uh, clear of all f of FOD. The range uh, between the station and the Soyuz vehicle is about 10 meters, and we still have aggregate uh, readiness of the attitude control system. And this view from Soyuz cameras. Stand by for the first separation burn. Showing uh, the uh, Soyuz's perspective, looking right back at the docking port on the Poisk module. Just seconds away from the first of uh, two separation burns by the uh, Soyuz uh, vehicle. This will be an eight second burn to increase its opening rate away from the orbital laboratory. Depots. Uh, uh, started firing exactly three minutes after the un undocking. 7.9 seconds of uh, depot uh, firing. Right now we are rolling to the left. Um, the um, roll maneuver is complete. The range is currently about 30 meters. Standing by for the second sub burn. Good thruster uh, activity. First separation burn was right on the money. Standing by for the second. We see the uh, motion control system readiness. Yep, we confirm aggregate uh, edited control system readiness. Um, in five seconds, stand by for the second set burn. Copy. Depots are on at four minutes, 20 uh, seconds after the physical separation. Um, we are moving towards um, the U.S. segment of the station. 14.9 seconds. And the second separation burn now complete and reported to be good. No issues. This view again from the Soyuz as it uh, begins a faster opening rate away from the space station. 18. Um, to, um, Soyuz departure uh, this evening coming amidst a period of activity in which 14 astronauts and cosmonauts are coming and going from the station in four different spacecraft over a three-week period in addition to two vehicle relocations, one by this very Soyuz MS-17 spacecraft back on March 19th, followed a few days later by the um, relocation of the Crew-1 Dragon vehicle. Uh, the Periscope 2 um, approach mode. And you can uh, remove uh, the maneuver flag. Copy. UV-1 to um, address 11. Copy and confirm. Go ahead. We have maneuver. It's gone. Uh, depots are position closed. Are on. And we monitoring via. Yes. Yeah, so uh, uh, if you have a go, to put the cover into the closed position. Copy. I have a go. 
On your go, uh, we'd like to remove the uh, inhibit for command execution uh, uh, confer confirmation. You are going to do that. Use address two. Enter the number. Entering. Inhibit of um, confirmation or acknowledgement of multiple vehicles in the field of view. The uh, Crew-1, Crew Dragon Resilience in the foreground. Right behind it, uh, the Soyuz MS-17 departing, heading for a landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan at 11.56 p.m. Central. Confirmed. Selecting. Uh, go ahead and turn off um, SSVPM. Uh, docking mechanism, copy. That's command uh, D8. D8 has been uh, fired. D7, D17 are not illuminated. Turning off the flight light. The flight light is turned off. And we're going to put uh, the translation hand controller into the stowage or transportation position. Copy and concur. Sergey. Uh, the juxtaposition of uh, the current space program and the future target, the crescent moon, Copy. nearby uh, as the Soyuz continues to depart the neighborhood of the International Space Station. Translational hand controller is in the transportation position. Copy. TVS uh, display. I have armed the command to TV off, OFF. Ready to fire the command. Command has been fired and executed. TV is off. Copy. Please let us know uh, when you'd like to get the SCADU parameters. You can uh, give it to us now. The first section uh, pressure tank pressure is 162. Copy. Sec section 2 pressure tank um, pressure is 164. And prop is 460. Copy. Soyuz Commander Sergei Rizhikov uh, reporting fuel parameters and uh, tank pressures to uh, the Russian flight controllers uh, in the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow. Uh, the reduced pressure alarm disconnection from control circuit. Command A5. Uh, Good view of the Soyuz MS-17 uh, with Rubens Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov uh, on board. Uh, Eleven minutes now uh, since the undocking of the Soyuz. Next stop, Kazakhstan. Off. And the off nominal... Uh, Uh, off nominal situations, our ODF is um, restaged. Copy that. The next uh, milestone is um, at 055500. Okay, so that means we'll see you in over an hour.
on Smith Jones Run. Yes, Oleg. just make sure on that you know, Downing. you remember that um, um, so you are in dynamic enabled mode on the vehicle, so uh, be sensitive to that. And well, the uh, three crew members aboard the uh, Soyuz MS-17 have departed the International Space Station. The uh, search and recovery forces and embedded NASA personnel have departed their hotel in Jezkazgan, the staging site for tonight's landing operations. They'll be making their way to the Jezkazgan airport to position themselves on their respective Russian Mi-8 helicopters, awaiting takeoff around the time of the deorbit burn headed for the landing zone. This is Mission Control Houston. If you're just joining us, you're looking at the Soyuz MS-17 spacecraft that departed uh, the International Space Station 14 minutes ago under the command of Russian cosmonaut Sergei Ryzhikov, accompanied by NASA's Kate Rubens and Russian cosmonaut Sergei Kudsverchkov. They are now free-flying from the station, moving to a point uh, well away from the complex for the deorbit burn that will take place to begin their journey home, the deorbit burn scheduled at 11.01 .01 p.m. Central Time tonight. The uh, three crew members on board the Soyuz MS-17 will now have a bit of uh, free time until uh, a little over an hour from now when they'll tag up with uh, the Russian flight controllers uh, at the Russian Mission Control Center to uh, receive a briefing on uh, weather conditions in the landing area, the atmospheric pressure inputs uh, for their control panel, and other uh, checks of their systems prior to the time that they approach uh, the deorbit burn.
It should be a splendid Saturday morning for a landing uh, in Kazakhstan with, again, just a few clouds forecast at 25,000 feet, visibility in excess of six miles, and temperatures uh, to greet the three crew members of about 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that uh, the undocking has occurred, uh, let's look forward uh, to the deorbit burn that is planned for 11.01 p.m. Central Time, a 4 minute 38 second retrograde braking maneuver to slow the Soyuz down, enabling it to drop out of orbit. Some 28 and a half minutes later, the pyrotechnic separation of the three sections of the Soyuz, the crew in the center section called the descent module. With the heat shield in the direction of travel, the uh, Three crew members will have G-forces building up around them to about three or four Gs or so, their maximum G-loads. About 15 minutes before touchdown, the command sequence is initiated to first deploy a large drogue chute, followed by an even larger main parachute. The Soyuz will cant into the right orientation, and uh, just a few seconds before touchdown, soft landing engines at the base of the Soyuz will fire in a final braking maneuver and uh, the crew will be home on the steppe of Kazakhstan with landing scheduled at 11.56 p.m. Central Time, 10.56 a.m. Kazakhstan time on Saturday morning. Once uh, the landing occurs, the uh, search and recovery forces will be uh, touching down one by one in the MI-8 helicopters that they will be boarding soon at the airport in Jezkazgan for about a 35-minute flight uh, from Jezkazgan to the landing zone. Once uh, the helos are on the ground, uh, first off will be the uh, erection of an inflatable medical tent nearby where the three crew members will be carried into for initial medical tests shortly after they have a few minutes uh, in uh, comfortable chairs outside of the uh, spacecraft once they're extracted one by one. The uh, medical tests uh, should take uh, about an hour and a half or so, after which uh, the three crew members will, will be brought uh, into respective helicopters uh, nearby for about a two hour and 15 minute flight to the uh, staging city in Karaganda, uh, where all of the uh, various uh, uh, respective parties uh, supporting landing tonight in Kazakhstan uh, first began uh, their uh, meetings and uh, reviews of landing conditions a few days ago. It uh, once back in Karaganda, Kate Rubens uh, will board a uh, NASA aircraft for a flight back to Houston while Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov will board a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft for a flight back to their training base in Star City, Russia, outside of Moscow.
to recap, uh, the Soyuz MS-17 has undocked from the International Space Station, that occurring on time at 8.34 p.m. Central Time. Kate Rubens, Sergei Ryzhikov, and Sergei Kudsverchkov are now moving to a safe distance away from the station for the uh, final leg of their journey home and a parachute-assisted landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan just before midnight Central Time tonight. We will be back on the air in about an hour and a half at 10.30 p.m. Central Time, 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time with our deorbit burn and landing coverage. And again, you see the times there of the deorbit burn, 11.01 p.m., landing at 11.56 p.m. We will be on the air with all of the post-landing activities at the landing site. So we'll see you back here at Mission Control in Houston in an hour and a half. Thanks for joining us. This is Mission Control Houston. spacecraft and its three occupants uh, back away from the orbital complex. Sergey Ryzhikov, the Soyuz commander, under the call sign of Favore, is in the center seat of the descent module, flanked on his left by Kud Sverchkov and on his right by Kate Rubens. Switching to narrow angle. One minute away from the command to initiate the opening of the hooks, holding the Soyuz in place at the Poisk module. Uh, sending command D7, D15. Uh, arm a command uh, D17 to open the hooks. Copy. Going to page 42 and arming command to open the hooks. The International Space Station currently flying over Mongolia, about to cross the border into China. To fire the command to open the hooks. At the specified time, you are go to open the hooks. Copy. Standing by for the command to begin the opening of the hooks. Three, two, one, command sent. And the hooks are driving open. Is no longer illuminated. Electrical connections uh, not illuminated. Uh, the um, uh, transfer hatch closed. LED is on. Copy. One minute away from physical separation. Just a quick reminder for you that um, at physical separation, the timers will start automatically. Copy. Moments away from the springs on both sides of the docking interface to push off against one another to begin physical separation. Copy. And during the separation, please make sure there are no FOD uh, around the perimeter of the docking interface. I copy. I will provide you a running commentary on that. Thank you. 
Undocking confirmed. Separation. On time at 8.34 p.m. Central Time, 9.34 p.m. Eastern Time, as the International Space Station flew 258 statute miles over the Mongolian Chinese border. Moving away in our small vehicle. Rubens, Rizhikov, and Kudsverchkov on their way home for a landing less than three and a half hours from now. Uh, the range is about 10 meters. And we have aggregate uh, readiness of um, docking system. Four zero, uh, four, uh, zero three is the exact time of undocking. We're not seeing any FOD around the perimeter of the docking interface. Copy. Expedition 65 now officially underway aboard the International Space Station as uh, the three crew members on the Soyuz MS-17 begin their trek home. I uh, can view the entire uh, docking interface and I can confirm the docking interface uh, is uh, clear of all f of FOD. The range uh, between the station and the Soyuz vehicle is about 10 meters, and we still have aggregate uh, readiness of the attitude control system. And this view from Soyuz cameras. Stand by for the first separation burn. Showing uh, the uh, Soyuz's perspective, looking right back at the docking port on the Poisk module. Just seconds away from the first of uh, two separation burns by the uh, Soyuz uh, vehicle. This will be an eight second burn to increase its opening rate away from the orbital laboratory. Depots. Uh, uh, started firing exactly three minutes after the un undocking. 7.9 seconds of uh, depot uh, firing. Right now we are rolling to the left. Um, the um, roll maneuver is complete. The range is currently about 30 meters. Standing by for the second sub burn. Good thruster uh, activity. First separation burn was right on the money. Standing by for the second. We see the uh, motion control system readiness. Yep, we confirm aggregate uh, edited control system readiness. Um, in five seconds, stand by for the second set burn. Copy. Depots are on at four minutes, 20 uh, seconds after the physical separation. Um, we are moving towards um, the U.S. segment of the station. 14 decimal nine or seconds. And the second separation burn now complete and reported to be good. No issues. This view again from the Soyuz as it uh, begins a faster opening rate away from the space station. 18. 
Подождите еще пару секунд. Насладиться видом станции. Um, to, um... Soyuz departure uh, this evening coming amidst a period of activity in which 14 astronauts and cosmonauts are coming and going from the station in four different spacecraft over a three-week period, in addition to two vehicle relocations, one by this very Soyuz MS-17 spacecraft back on March 19th, followed a few days later by the uh, relocation of the Crew-1 Dragon vehicle. Uh, the periscope to um, approach mode. And you can uh, remove uh, the maneuver flag. Copy. UV-1 to um, address 11. Copy and confirm. Go ahead. We have maneuver. It's gone. Uh, depots are position closed. Are on. And we're monitoring via. Yes, uh, uh, affirmative. Uh, you have a go to put the cover day into the closed position. Copy, I have a go. Uh, on your go, uh, we'd like to remove the uh, inhibit for command execution uh, uh, confir confirmation. You are going to do that. Use address 2. Enter the number. Entering. Inhibit of um, confirmation or acknowledgement of multiple vehicles in the field of view. The uh, Crew-1 Crew Dragon Resilience in the foreground. Right behind it, uh, the Soyuz MS-17 departing, heading for a landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan at 11.56 p.m. Central. Confirmed. Selecting. Uh, go ahead and turn off um, SSVPM. Uh, docking mechanism. Copy. That's command uh, D8. D8 has been uh, fired. D7, D17 are not illuminated. Turning off the flight light. The light light is turned off. And we're going to put uh, the translation hand controller into the stowage or transportation position. Copy and concur. Sergey. Uh, the juxtaposition of uh, the current space program and the future target, the crescent moon, Copy. nearby uh, as the Soyuz continues to depart the neighborhood of the International Space Station. Translational hand controller is in the transportation position. Copy. TVS uh, display. I have armed the command to TV off, OFF. Ready to fire the command. Command has been fired and executed. TV is off. Copy. Please let us know uh, when you'd like to get the SCADU parameters. You can uh, give it to us now. The first section uh, pressure tank pressure is 162. Copy. Sec section 2 pressure tank um, Pressure is 164, and prop is 460. Copy. Soyuz Commander Sergei Rizhikov uh, reporting fuel parameters and uh, tank pressures 
to uh, the Russian flight controllers uh, in the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow. Uh, the reduced pressure alarm disconnection from control circuit. Command A5. Uh, Good view of the Soyuz MS-17 with Rubens Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov uh, on board. 11 minutes now uh, since the undocking of the Soyuz. Next stop, Kazakhstan. Off. And the off nominal... Uh, Uh, off nominal situations, our ODF is um, restaged. Copy that. The next uh, milestone is um, at 055500. Okay, so that means Station. we'll see you in over an hour. Yes, Alex, just make sure that you know, something. you remember that um, um, you are in dynamic enabled mode on the vehicle, so uh, be sensitive to that. And well, the uh, three crew members aboard the uh, Soyuz MS-17 have departed the International Space Station. The uh, search and recovery forces and embedded NASA personnel have departed their hotel in Jezkazgan, the staging site for tonight's landing operations. They'll be making their way to the Jezkazgan airport to position themselves on their respective Russian Mi-8 helicopters, awaiting takeoff around the time of the deorbit burn, headed for the landing zone. This is Mission Control Houston. If you're just joining us, you're looking at the Soyuz MS-17 spacecraft that departed uh, the International Space Station 14 minutes ago under the command of Russian cosmonaut Sergei Rizhikov, accompanied by NASA's Kate Rubens and Russian cosmonaut Sergei Kudsverchkov. They are now free-flying from the station, moving to a point uh, well away from the complex for the deorbit burn that will take place to begin their journey home, the deorbit burn scheduled at 11.01 p.m. Central Time tonight.
The uh, three crew members on board the Soyuz MS-17 will now have a bit of uh, free time until uh, a little over an hour from now when they'll tag up with uh, the Russian flight controllers uh, at the Russian Mission Control Center to uh, receive a briefing on uh, weather conditions in the landing area, the atmospheric pressure inputs uh, for their control panel, and other uh, checks of their systems prior to the time that they approach uh, the deorbit burn. It should be a splendid Saturday morning for a landing uh, in Kazakhstan with, again, just a few clouds forecast at 25,000 feet, visibility in excess of six miles, and temperatures uh, to greet the three crew members of about 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Is the colder which would be better, or do you want me to put them into the generic one? That's awesome. Better a folder, yes. It will be called MS-17. MS-17, fantastic. Thank you. Now that uh, the undocking has occurred, uh, let's look forward uh, to the deorbit burn that is planned for 11.01 p.m. Central Time, a 4 minute 38 second retrograde braking maneuver to slow the Soyuz down, enabling it to drop out of orbit. Some 28 and a half minutes later, the pyrotechnic separation of the three sections of the Soyuz, the crew in the center section called the descent module. With the heat shield in the direction of travel, the uh, Three crew members will have G-forces building up around them to about three or four Gs or so, their maximum G-loads. About 15 minutes before touchdown, the command sequence is initiated to first deploy a large drogue chute, followed by an even larger main parachute. The Soyuz will cant into the right orientation, and uh, just a few seconds before touchdown, soft landing engines at the base of the Soyuz will fire in a final braking maneuver and uh, the crew will be home on the steppe of Kazakhstan with landing scheduled at 11.56 p.m. Central Time, 10.56 a.m. Kazakhstan time on Saturday morning. Once uh, the landing occurs, the uh, search and recovery forces will be uh, touching down one by one in the MI-8 helicopters that they will be boarding soon at the airport in Jezkazgan for about a 35-minute flight uh, from Jezkazgan to the landing zone. Once uh, the helos are on the ground, uh, first off will be the uh, erection of an inflatable medical tent nearby where the three crew members will be carried into for initial medical tests shortly after they have a few minutes uh, in uh, comfortable chairs outside of the uh, spacecraft once they're extracted one by one. The uh, medical tests uh, should take uh, about an hour and a half or so, after which uh, the three crew members will, will be brought uh, into respective helicopters uh, nearby for about a two hour and 15 minute flight to the uh, staging city in Karaganda, uh, where all of the uh, various uh, uh, respective parties uh, supporting landing tonight in Kazakhstan uh, first began uh, their uh, meetings and uh, reviews of landing conditions a few days ago. 
It uh, once back in Karaganda, Kate Rubens uh, will board a uh, NASA aircraft for a flight back to Houston, while Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov will board a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft for a flight back to their training base in Star City, Russia, outside of Moscow. To recap, uh, the Soyuz MS-17 has undocked from the International Space Station, that occurring on time at 8.34 p.m. Central Time. Kate Rubens, Sergei Ryzhikov, and Sergei Kudsverchkov are now moving to a safe distance away from the station for the uh, final leg of their journey home and a parachute-assisted landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan just before midnight Central Time tonight. We will be back on the air in about an hour and a half at 10.30 p.m. Central Time, 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time, with our deorbit burn and landing coverage. And again, you see the times there of the deorbit burn, 11.01 p.m., landing at 11.56 p.m. We will be on the air with all of the post-landing activities at the landing site. So we'll see you back here at Mission Control in Houston in an hour. Well, in my left hand, I have a, a feather. In my right hand, a hammer. And I guess one of the reasons uh, we got here today was because of a gentleman named Galileo a long time ago who made a rather significant discovery about falling objects in gravity fields. And we thought that uh, where would be a better place to confirm his uh, findings than on the moon. And uh, so we thought we'd try it here for you. Uh, the feather happens to be appropriately a falcon feather.
Good evening from Mission Control in Houston and the International Space Station Flight Control Room at the Johnson Space Center, where at this hour, flight controllers not only here, but a half a world away at the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow in the town of Korolyov are preparing for the homecoming of Expedition 64 crew members Kate Rubens of NASA and Sergei Ryzhikov and Sergei Kudsverchkov of Roscosmos to wrap up their 185-day mission that has spanned almost 3,000 orbits of the Earth, a mission of 78.4 million miles. We are just uh, less than 31 minutes away from the engine firing of 4 minutes and 39 seconds now that will slow the Soyuz down by 128 meters per second to enable the Soyuz to drop out of orbit to begin its entry back into the Earth's atmosphere and a landing just one hour and 24 minutes from now on the steppe of Kazakhstan, 91 miles to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan, where Russian search and recovery forces will be awaiting the arrival of these three crew members who have spent uh, half a year in space. Everything is in great shape aboard the uh, Soyuz spacecraft. All the systems are uh, checked out, ready to go. Just a short time ago, just a few minutes ago, the director of the Cosmonaut uh, Training Center in Star City, Russia, Pavel Vlasov, who directs the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center, radioed up to the crew that uh, the conditions at the landing site are calm and peaceful. He described the air as fresh with low humidity and said, the landing site has the smell of spring. It smells like freshly cut grass. Have a good flight home to your home planet. Those words coming from Pavel Vlasov, the director of the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center. And we are standing by At the airport in uh, Jezkazgan, uh, the forward uh, staging site for tonight's landing and recovery operations, a dozen MI-8 helicopters are uh, set to take off a short time from now. Uh, most of them heading uh, for the prime landing site to, to the southeast of Jezkazgan. Two of the helicopters to move uh, to the midpoint between uh, the landing site and the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan in the event uh, of a ballistic landing, the unlikely event of a shortfall in the uh, trajectory of the Soyuz back to Earth. And uh, two additional helicopters uh, will be poised uh, in the vicinity, uh, all uh, of the bases covered, to recover the crew as quickly as possible following their touchdown in their Soyuz MS-17 spacecraft. The three returning crew members, Kate Rubens of NASA, Sergei uh, Ryzhikov, who's the Soyuz MS-17 commander and who was also the Expedition 64 commander during uh, this long uh, duration mission aboard the International Space Station, and flight engineer Sergei kud Sverchkov are uh, in the home stretch of their flight. Uh, Rubens, uh, when she lands, will have uh, logged 300 days in space on her two flights, the fourth most days in space by a U.S. female astronaut behind Peggy Whitson, Christina Cook, and Sonny Williams. Sergei Ryzhikov will have logged 185 days in space on his two missions uh, over this increment, Expeditions 63-64, and will have totaled 358 days in space on his two flights. Could Sverchkov is wrapping up his first flight into space. Some five hours ago aboard the International Space Station, the three departing crew members uh, had an opportunity one final time to say goodbye to the uh, crew members who are remaining on board the station, now part of Expedition 65, that officially began with the undocking of the Soyuz uh, from the International Outpost. They had a chance uh, to say farewell to one another and then make their way into the uh, Soyuz spacecraft where they subsequently closed the hatches. Uh, those hatches uh, swung closed at 5.24 p.m. Central Time, 6.24 p.m. Eastern Time, after which the uh, three departing crew members uh, began a series of leak checks on their side of the docking interface, as did the station crew on their side in the Poisk module of the International Space Station. The uh, three uh, 
Expedition 64 crew members who are coming back to Earth this evening, Kate Rubens, Sergei Ryzhikov, and Sergei Kudzverchkov, then donned their Russian Sokol launch and entry suits, conducted leak checks on those suits, closed uh, the hatches uh, to the uppermost portion of uh, the uh, Soyuz spacecraft, the orbital module section, and uh, configured uh, all of their systems, conducted communications checks, and everything is in great shape uh, for tonight's landing. At uh, 8.34 p.m. Central Time, 9.34 p.m. Eastern Time, as uh, the International Space Station flew over the Mongolian-Chinese border, uh, hooks were opened uh, between the Soyuz and the Poisk module. Springs on both sides of the docking interface pushed off against one another, and the Soyuz was free, backing away from uh, the docking port to which it had relocated just a month ago to free up the Rosviet module on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the station for the arrival last week of three new crew members who uh, made their way to the space station, that uh, being Oleg Novitsky, uh, Pyotr Dubrov, and uh, NASA's Mark Vandehei. The uh, Soyuz uh, slowly backed away. There were two firings of uh, Soyuz thrusters and a pair of separation burns to maintain an opening rate and increase that opening rate uh, from uh, the International Space Station. The Soyuz has now moved uh, to a position some uh, 32 kilometers away from the International Space Station in preparation for the deorbit burn that will be coming up less than 25 minutes from now. Twenty-five minutes of thrust deactivation, attitude is nominal, and the angle is currently 185.5. The deorbit burn is scheduled at 11.01 uh, p.m. Central Time. It, again, will be a four-minute, 39-second uh, retrograde firing, a braking maneuver of the Soyuz engines to slow the vehicle down by 128 meters per second, allowing it to drop out of orbit. Some 28 minutes after the deorbit burn, pyrotechnics will uh, fire to separate the three sections of the Soyuz. The three crew members in the center section or descent module will feel uh, the G-forces building up around them as they move through the plasma regime of the Earth's atmosphere. Once they exit the plasma uh, regime, uh, the Command will be given to open up the parachutes 15 minutes before touchdown. First a drogue chute followed by a giant main chute. And uh, the Soyuz will be canted into the correct position for its altimeter to measure its rate of descent and its altitude uh, from the landing site. Just a few seconds before touchdown, soft landing engines will fire and the Soyuz will be home with landing scheduled at 11.56 p.m. Central Time 10.56 a.m. Kazakhstan time on Saturday morning. At the, the landing site, uh, just a few clouds uh, are uh, noticed uh, at about the 25,000 foot level. Visibility in excess of six miles. The temperature at landing time is expected to be about 64 degrees Fahrenheit, an ideal Saturday spring morning for the homecoming of Rubens, Rizhikov, and Kud Sverchkov. Again, uh, the Russian search and recovery forces are uh, ready to go from the Jezkazgan airport. Uh, the uh, various uh, recovery team members that includes embedded NASA personnel are already on their respective helicopters. Uh, at the time of the deorbit burn, rotors will be spinning and the helicopters will set off for about a 35-minute helicopter ride from Jezkazgan to the landing zone, some 91 miles to the southeast. They will arrive in a sequential fashion, will uh, begin to circle uh, in a racetrack fashion around the landing zone, waiting uh, for the arrival of the Soyuz under its chutes. After touchdown, those helicopters will land uh, very quickly uh, in uh, sequential fashion again, uh, the first of the helicopters uh, will be down to erect an inflatable orange medical tent 
near the capsule to which uh, the three crew members will be carried in their chairs uh, once they are extracted from the Soyuz and have a chance uh, to sit in those chairs for a few minutes to get their land legs back. Again, they'll be carried in those chairs into the medical tent where they'll uh, be helped out of their Sokol la launch and entry suits. They'll get into more comfortable clothing. They'll undergo a series of medical tests before boarding three helicopters, one for each crew member, for a two-hour, 15-minute flight back uh, to uh, Karaganda, Kazakhstan, uh, which uh, was the initial staging city for tonight's landing operations. In Karaganda is a NASA jet and a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft. Those uh, two aircraft uh, will be waiting for the arrival of the crew members who will split up at that point with Kate Rubens boarding the NASA jet for a flight back to Houston and uh, the two cosmonauts boarding their aircraft for a flight back to their training base in Star City, Russia, outside of Moscow. Two uh, milestones uh, following the deorbit burn, and uh, you will be hearing uh, uh, Soyuz Commander Sergei Rizhikov uh, through an interpreter calling out uh, the duration of the burn and uh, tank pressures uh, and the uh, delta V or the change in velocity as uh, the burn continues for the duration of its four minutes and 39 seconds. Once the burn is completed, the uppermost uh, section of the three-section Soyuz spacecraft, the orbital module, will be depressurized about 10 seconds after the completion of the burn. That will set the stage for its uh, pyrotechnic separation from the rest of the Soyuz uh, vehicle uh, once uh, we have completed the burn about 28 minutes after the deorbit burn prior to the entrance of the descent module with the three crew members back into the Earth's atmosphere. Once the Soyuz has moved to a distance of about 120 kilometers away from the International Space Station, we are expecting uh, VHF voice communications to become ratty and perhaps unavailable uh, because of the distance involved in the geometry between the antennas on the Soyuz spacecraft and the International Space Station. Uh, it will uh, be... Uh, Sometimes we uh, get lucky and the communications hang in there, sometimes not so much. So we'll see what happens this evening. But once the Soyuz uh, moves toward the vicinity of the landing site, there is a, a Russian Antonov uh, 26 uh, space, uh, fixed wing aircraft that operates as a uh, flying command and control center through which uh, voice and data will be relayed back to uh, Russian flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow. So we'll be standing by to see whether or not uh, we hang in there with communications all the way down or lose communications. Don't be surprised if we go uh, with a loss of signal for a period of time and then reacquire communications with the Soyuz as it approaches the landing site. As we've mentioned uh, in our earlier broadcast tonight, uh, this is an unprecedented period of human spaceflight activity uh, at the International Space Station with uh, 14 astronauts and cosmonauts coming and going from the outpost in four different spacecraft over a three-week period. This uh, landing tonight uh, is the second of a four-act series that will continue next week at the Kennedy Space Center with the scheduled launch next Thursday on a SpaceX Dragon vehicle, the Endeavor of uh, Shane Kimbrough, Megan MacArthur, Aki Hoshide, and Thomas Pesquet as uh, that multinational crew launches from Launch Pad 39A at the Cape uh, to uh, rendezvous and dock uh, to the International Space Station to expand uh, the station's population from its current uh, seven-person crew to an 11 person crew for a, a period of time, a short period of time, until uh, the crew one 
astronauts who launched back in November, Mike Hopkins, Victor Glover, Soichi Noguchi, and um, Shannon Walker, who's the current commander of the International Space Station, until they return, their, their scheduled undocking and splashdown is scheduled for April 28th. So a busy time at the International Space Station. Air traffic control uh, definitely uh, is uh, the uh, prevailing uh, activity uh, for uh, not only the uh, station uh, astronauts and cosmonauts, but for uh, program officials and the international partnership as they make their way methodically, step by step, to ensure the uh, safe launch and landing and return to Earth of all of these crew members in the uh, continuing permanent human occupancy of the International Laboratory. To give you a sense of uh, all of the vehicles uh, currently at the International Space Station, you can see in this graphic uh, the current uh, configuration, the Soyuz MS-17, of course, uh, undocked a few hours ago, so it's gone, uh, ready for its deorbit burn to begin the uh, trip back to Earth. The Soyuz MS-18 that carried uh, Mark Vandehei, Oleg Novitsky, and Pyotr Dubrov to the station a week ago is uh, docked to the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. Also present, uh, the Crew-1 Dragon spacecraft, at the uh, zenith or space-facing port of the Harmony module, soon to be joined by a second Crew Dragon, the Crew, the Crew 2 Dragon, that will dock to the forward port of Harmony. And you see two uh, unpiloted uh, Russian Progress cargo ships and the Northrop Grumman Cygnus cargo ship also present at the International Space Station. And confirm. We're now 14 and a half minutes away from the start of the deorbit burn. Again, a four minute, 39 second firing of the Soyuz engines to uh, slow it down by 128 meters per second, enabling it to drop out of orbit to begin its high speed return back to Earth. The uh, Russian Search and Recovery Forces uh, that belong to the uh, Russian civilian agency called Rosaviatsa are all at the uh, Jez Kazgan Airport. Uh, those personnel all aboard uh, Russian Mi-8 military helicopters with uh, rotors about to spin up. The first of those helicopters uh, to depart the airport for the landing site at about the time of the deorbit burn some 12 and a half minutes from now. Amongst uh, the NASA contingent, uh, 
participating uh, in Kazakhstan uh, tonight uh, for tonight's landing and recovery operations include uh, Trisha Mack, who's the uh, Director of Human Spaceflight Programs in Russia, Bill Spetch uh, from the International Space Station Program Office, uh, representing uh, mission integration and operations for tonight's recovery operations, uh, Dr. Natasha Cho, who is uh, Kate Rubin's flight surgeon, a series of uh, Russian nurses attending to the three crew members with their own respective uh, flight surgeons as well. NASA Public Affairs Officer Courtney Beasley uh, will be uh, on one of the first helicopters down to the landing site, along with Bill Ingalls, NASA's chief photographer. Astronaut Drew Morgan is uh, representing the astronaut office uh, for tonight's recovery operations. A, a veteran of a long duration mission aboard the International Space Station that launched on the 50th anniversary of uh, America's landing on the moon on Apollo 11. Coming up on the 10-minute mark before the deorbit burn, everything quiet aboard the uh, Soyuz vehicle. The uh, Soyuz commander, Sergei Ryzhikov, seated in the center seat of the uh, descent module, the centermost section of the three-section Soyuz spacecraft, flanked on his left by Sergei Kud Sverchkov and Kate Rubens on his right. And uh, there's uh, a cutaway view of the uh, descent module. Again, uh, the crew strapped in, having checked out uh, their spacesuits. Uh, they are clad in their Sokol launch and entry suits. Soon uh, to feel the first effects of Earth's gravity for the first time in more than six months. But the power has been shut off to the sensor. Is that right? One minute has passed, but the flag is still there, and we have, um, we did send the command, though, for the deactivation, um, and so uh, power supply to uh, the EKV is um, not being supplied, but you still have the, you don't have the flag. Is that right? Yes. And we confirm depot thrusters are firing, and we have like 20 minutes left. Copy. We confirm the maneuver to SKD. SKD is minus eight minutes. And on the in the right info, we are sending the command. And D9, Delta 9, is illuminated. S Sierra 9 is illuminated. Copy, Sierra 9 is illuminated. Unintelligible. We copy. Countdown clocks uh, now hit the seven minute mark prior to the deorbit burn. Four minutes and 39 second engine firing 
to slow uh, the Soyuz down and enable it to drop out of orbit to begin its trip back to Earth. Coming up on the six minute mark uh, prior to the deorbit burn, just about one hour until touchdown. Parameters before SK day activation. I have the parameters written down. We have integrated GESO. We have the pressure tank pre um, 155 for the first, and 157 for the second one. Prop is nominal. And 18 point and 70. Seven seven four. Seven seven four is the pressure in the descent module, and for the tanks, we have eighteen point one and eighteen point two. Did you say eighteen point one and eighteen point two? Yes, affirmative. Four and a half minutes now until the deorbit burn. Sergei Rizhikov just a moment ago reading off uh, propulsion parameters uh, for the Russian flight controllers in Korolyov. Everything in good shape. The stage is set for the start of the journey home for Rubens Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov. One minute till escadet was the activation and everything's fine on board. We copy. You please depress. Uh, you can depress the transmit button during the thrust of firing. Copy. Flight controllers uh, in Korolyov uh, will be expecting uh, Rizhikov to provide uh, continuous commentary of the progress of the deorbit burn. Uh, so that his, uh, his reports uh, can match up to uh, all of the parameters that the flight controllers are seeing at their consoles. In uh, Koryov, you're looking at a uh, live view from a balcony camera overlooking the Russian flight control room. Two and a half minutes away now from the deorbit burn. One minute to 
Escadetig. On board, everything is a okay. Ninety seconds now until the deorbit burn. We're getting close to uh, one minute before Escadetig. We copy. Escade TIG minus one. Less than a minute uh, before the initiation of the deorbit burn, the Russian Mi 8 helicopters uh, at the airport in Jezkazgan have their rotors spinning, ready to take off in sequential fashion, heading for the landing site. Copy. Going to page 51. 30 seconds. 30 seconds to Escadetig. Select um, maneuver or uh, Escadet burn. Uh, monitoring. Copy. Transmit. 10 seconds away, standing by for the start of the deorbit burn. Copy. Engine start, deorbit burn underway. Current position zero, uh, at um, 0 0.47, 0 0.48 seconds. Five and a half, delta V. Change in velocity being reported uh, now by Sergei Rizhikov, the Soyuz commander. This is a four minute, 39 second retrograde maneuver. 13.8 over 30 seconds. And we are on page 53, working for the table. Copy. O2 supply uh, is activated from the gas analyzer. One minute, 26 decimal two delta V. KDU parameters are nominal, uh, propellant consumption nominal. One minute, 15 seconds, 33 and 0.8 delta V. Soyuz continues to decelerate uh, as planned. Now a minute and a half into the burn. Uh, firing. Uh, one minute thirty seconds into the thruster operation. Forty-one decimal zero delta V. The parameters are nominal. Copy, Sergey. The second. One minute forty-seven forty-nine. Uh, Delta V, after 1 minute 47 seconds. Copy. 2 minutes. 54 decimal 4 is Delta V. Copy, and that is nominal. Uh, we confirm uh, the burn is going nominally. 2 minutes 15 uh, seconds. 61 decimal 6 Delta V. Two and a half minutes into the burn, about two minutes to go. Two minutes, 30 seconds. 68 decimal niner, Delta V. All parameters and um, a propellant consumption is nominal. Copy. Two minutes, 45 seconds, 74 decimal eight, Delta V. Three minutes into the burn, everything is uh, going as planned. At the uh, specified time. 
at three minutes eighty three decimal zero uh, delta V and all Kadu integrated propulsion system. System parameters are nominal. At three minutes fifteen seconds, a delta V gained uh, eighty eight decimal niner. Three and a half minutes, ninety six decimal nine. Uh, propellant consumption is nominal. Copy. Approaching the four-minute mark into the burn, about 39 seconds left. Four minutes of uh, Escadea firing, uh, LTV gained, 109.9. All Cadeau parameters are still nominal. Copy. We're standing by. Of four main engine cutoff command in about 20 seconds. Copy and concur. 10 seconds, two main engine cutoff. Command 124 Delta V. Copy. And the deorbit burn is complete and reported to have been perfectly executed. Kate Rubens, Sergei Kud Sverchkov, and Soyuz Commander Sergei Rizhikov on their way home. At 070613, uh, KSDBO is open in a docking compartment. Uh, we have uh, stable pressure at 744, uh, and the pressure is dropping in orbital module. And as planned, uh, the uh, orbital module, the topmost section of the three-section Soyuz vehicle being depressurized, this uh, in advance of the uh, pyrotechnic separation of the three portions of the Soyuz spacecraft coming up at uh, 11.29, about 22 minutes or so from now, that uh, will uh, leave the descent module and the three crew members on their own with the heat shield uh, in the direction of travel toward the landing site uh, southeast of Jezkazgan in uh, southern Kazakhstan. Favori, Moscow. Favori are here. Right now, uh, we're continuing to drop pressure in the orbital module. Uh, currently, the orbital module pressure uh, is 115. And um, the docking compartment. Uh, pressure is stable at 744. Copy. We can uh, check the view settings. Moscow, favor, we cannot hear you. If you can hear us, the pressure in orbital module is less than 100. 97 currently. Uh, um, in the blind, um, we are aware that we have to uh, 
seal our pressure helmets at the zero seven twenty four by zero seven twenty three fifty five no later um but we're planning to do so uh, a little bit earlier at zero seven at uh, twenty one ish copy we have you loud and clear we have twenty minutes to module separation and O2 supply is continuing. Soyuz Commander Sergei Ryzhikov uh, maintaining a running dialogue uh, with flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center, reporting on Soyuz systems, the crew uh, putting their visors down on their helmets. This uh, in preparation for the pyrotechnic separation of the three sections of the Soyuz, the topmost section called the orbital module, and the lower section, the instrumentation and propulsion module. They will be uh, separating soon. The separation uh, pyrotechnics expected at about uh, 11.30 p.m. Central Time. That will allow the uh, descent module uh, to fly on its own uh, with its computers honed in on uh, the landing site about 91 miles to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan. Favore, mission control. Favore are here. We hear you through the noise. How would you read us? We have you loud and clear. Uh, we can verify uh, BIOS power and uh, BIOS readiness. Everything's in order on board. Uh, the pressure is uh, rising a little bit bit on board in the docking compartment um, because of O2 being supplied into the cabin. Right now it's 748, uh, otherwise everything is nominal on board. And um, in 10 minutes we're planning to seal the pressure helmets. Um, please uh, go through the uh, last minute uh, buddy checks, uh, verify that your uh, um, straps are uh, strapped in tightly. That your knee pads are positioned properly. Moscow, we cannot understand anything you're saying. The uh, Soyuz is uh, moving further and further away uh, from the uh, International Space Station to a point to a point where VHF voice communications is expected to become ratty, if not unavailable, for a period of time until the spacecraft uh, approaches the landing site and uh, begins uh, to uh, provide uh, communications capability with the Antonov 26 uh, Airborne Command Center. The uh, fixed-wing aircraft uh, that is part of the search and recovery forces that uh, is airborne flying around the landing zone to act as a relay station for data and voice back to the Russian Mission Control Center. 15 seconds left to module separation. A copy. Please check your knee pads. Uh, make sure that uh, the uh, ODF books are uh, the hard uh, copies are uh, secured well. Moscow, um, we cannot understand what you're saying. Please repeat.
Everything quiet uh, here in Mission Control in Houston as uh, the voice communications uh, begins to diminish uh, between the Soyuz spacecraft and the Russian flight control team simply because of the distance now that the Soyuz has moved away from the International Space Station and the uh, location and positioning of the antennas on the Soyuz relative to the relay antennas for VHF communications through the station. Favor, if you can hear Moscow, before module separation, please verify uh, the positioning of your knee pads. Uh, make sure that the uh, hard copies of your uh, procedures are securely restrained uh, with um, bungees or straps. We cannot hear you, Moscow. We don't understand what you are saying. Um, just letting you know that uh, uh, we are aware um, that we have um, module separation coming up at 072955. Everything's still uh, ready on board. Copy. Sergey Ryzhikov uh, reassuring flight controllers in Moscow, even though they cannot hear uh, the flight controllers calling them at the